Other news now, and in the election, all eyes were on the Liberal Democrat leader Nick Clegg today, four days after his strong performance in the prime ministerial debates. New polls are putting his party ahead of Labour and gaining ground on the Conservatives. In response, David Cameron changed his latest election broadcast to claim that only the Tories could deliver change. And Gordon Brown said the Lib Dems' political honeymoon would be short-lived, as our deputy political editor, James Landell, reports. Hi, Danny. You're right. Just how much has this man changed politics? After a 90-minute debate on TV, his party's polls have soared, he's in the limelight, and he can talk about wanting to be Prime Minister without blushing. I can't predict what's going to happen. I'm acutely aware, as anybody else, of course, is that polls go up, they go down, there's volatility, all the rest of it. All I know is that that, that the the old anchors, the old patterns the old established routines of elections are breaking down. But all the spin about these opinion polls will count for nothing if they're not turned into actual votes on streets like this in Watford, a three-way marginal north of London, where we ask voters about Mr Clegg and his policies. What about um, immigration? The Lib Dems would offer an amnesty to thousands of illegal immigrants who've been here for ten years. If they're working, yeah, but to be honest, I mean, I... I think there's too many, especially the illegal immigrants. What about Europe? The Lib Dems uh, are in favour of joining the euro when the conditions are right, things like that? If conditions are right, then yes, I don't see why not. Um, But uh, the conditions aren't right. But what do you make of Nick Clegg? Who's he? He's the leader of the Liberal Democrats. Never heard of him. The surge in Lib Dem supporters transformed this election and, frankly, the other parties have been struggling to find a response. They're dying to attack Lib Dem policies, but they know that if they're too negative, they could turn voters off even more. So instead, Gordon Brown saying only he can provide substance, and David Cameron saying only he can actually deliver change. I I know a little about what it is to have uh, a short political honeymoon. And I think uh, you go through these uh, uh, phases. I wish him, I wish him well uh, in it. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, as uh, everybody knows, there's serious questions to be asked. But on economic policy, let, let, let's be clear, they want to cut child tax credits, they want to cut uh, the child trust funds. Uh, the reason that uh, we are putting forward our programme and asking for a majority is that we believe that the manifesto we are putting forward is the right one for Britain. And the Tory leader warned what he thought a vote for the Lib Dems would mean. You could easily wake up on May the 7th and find literally you're stuck with what you've got. You're stuck with Gordon Brown in Downing Street, you're stuck with a deficit, you're stuck with an economy that isn't moving, and nothing has changed. That's why I can stand here and confidently say there is only one way to get real change that really delivers, that can get the job done, and that's to vote Conservative. The Clegg mania gripping Westminster hasn't quite hit Watford, but the dynamic of this election has changed. And for the moment, none of the main parties, including the Lib Dems, quite sure what to do with it. James Landau, BBC News, Watford. So the Liberal Democrat leader appears to be the man of the moment in the election campaign. It's not just his political opponents who are turning up the heat on him, but journalists as well. So how is Nick Clegg coping with the newfound interest? Mike Sargent has spent the day on the road with him. Nick Clegg hasn't gone from invisible to invincible overnight, but he's now the man the other parties can't ignore. As they train their fire on him, his challenge is to turn recognition into results on polling day. At the beginning of last week, there were lots of empty seats on the Liberal Democrat battle bus. Now it's rammed most of the time, and the crowds are getting bigger at every event. Party managers are telling the Liberal Democrats to keep their feet on the ground, but the grins are getting wider every day. A graph shows how Google searches for Nick Clegg have surged. I agree with Nick, T-shirts are being printed. And for the first time, there's international attention. But party strategists racing around with the press pack are keen to calm things down. They know that such rapidly won popularity could easily be lost. There's a long way to go in this campaign surge in popularity for you, but you're still eating peanuts for lunch. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's all I could pick up at, at Cardiff Station, but uh, the man's got to eat. A lot of extra interest in this um, campaign. It creates a lot of pressure for you, doesn't it? Um, I'm, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. To be honest, the only thing I found a bit of a hassle is um, early this morning being on the, endlessly being on the phone trying to work out how to get my kids back from um, 
from Spain, but I think we worked that out. So, uh, no, I, 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 I love campaigning, absolutely love campaigning. His opponents are confident they can burst Clegg's bubble and expose his policies in time for election day. But in such an unpredictable contest, the Lib Dems believe anything's possible. Mike Sargent, BBC News. Well, our political editor Nick Robinson is at Westminster now. Nick, what a difference uh, just a few days has, has made. It's as if the election campaign were turned upside down. That's right. It's the political equivalent of that volcanic eruption, isn't it, George, with political leaders having no idea whether they'll reach their destinations come May the 6th. I know you're used to the kind of hyperbole about these things, but we have never seen a change in the opinion polls like this in an election campaign. We are talking if the polls are confirmed. Of course, they may not be, but if they were be, David Cameron doing as badly as William Hague and Gordon Brown doing as badly as Michael Foote. And bizarre things being suggested that Labour could come third and yet get more seats than anybody else. Now, of course, the polls might not be the reality. There's a lot of argument to go still. There are still many days. But it has meant that both the other big parties are having to dictate their agenda around the Liberal Democrats. David Cameron insisting he's the real change. Gordon Brown saying that if you go with the Tories, that you will produce a huge uh, cut in public spending. If this, any of it, has excited you, one thing to remember... One more day to register and then you'll actually get a vote. All right, Nick, thank you.